Yeah, that works. Coconut. Coconut? Oh, speaking of coconut. Mr. Harloff, yeah. Polly G, attorney oh. at law. Okay, what'd I do? Well, nothing yet, oh. but I hear that you are competing for commissioner status. Congrats. Well, that's what they tell me. I don't know if it's being congratulated yet. But. Well, my client, Mr. Kalinowski, and I are keeping very close watch on this. We have a vested interest. And you have a nice vest as well, too. It's smooth. I like it. You should teach these people how to dress around here. Eyes are on you, Harloff. Very different league than it was a few years ago. Well, fuck it. Chance Ellison, Ethan Irwin, Dan Merle, Stacy Howard, and Draco McQueenie, Ben the Boss Bateman. Clark Wolf, the singles tournament begins. The winner of that entire tournament faces John the Outlaw Roca at the Spectacular. What a battle we're in for. I saw you had that uh, that manager's bowl <laughs> thing with, yeah. with Tom yeah. and, and Jay, and I, I was thinking I would like to participate in that match. I know that you love contracts, so I just happen to have one here. Okay, I mean, this, everything's signed. Uh, you're in. Winning the first manager ball, the Golden Knight! Yes! So Emma Five is your winner, and do, can we? Yes, yes. Come on out, Emma Five's first competitor. What? 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 Wait a minute! Oh wow. Um, we talked it over, and your offer to join your faction next month—that's not really going to work for us. Listen, I totally understand. You guys have both been performing no, really no, no, well. No, 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 no. We want to join you now. That's amazing. So, as you know, I have this number one contender spot to give to someone in our faction, and I've been sitting on the decision for a while, I've really been thinking about it, and, uh, you know, I've made my decision, and I, I really want to offer it to you. Don't you think that maybe we should save it for the teams? Like, you know you guys are going to get there. All right. You let me know who you want to take on, and I will formally issue the challenge. We'd like you to have the opportunity to take her on in a match for a potential shot at Sam Levine. Absolutely. Pens are down. Clark will start with you. James Eugene Carey. That is correct. Jim Carey. Mike. Congratulations. Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> we have <laughs> She gives it to Clark Wolf. Clark Wolf takes on Kalinowski. They have a great match. Clark Wolf wins it, and she earns her shot at the champion. Nicholas Cage, Emma Stone, and Ryan Reynolds all voice cavemen in what animated feature? And Sam? The Prudes. Clark? You got it. And your winner! Oh. And still, movie trivia showdown! Done everything I wanted to do in the showdown, okay. there's only one logical step left. And that is to walk away. What's going to happen here is that Bibiani will play the winner of Andreco and Irwin, and that will be our new champion. Mark Andreco is 3-0 and since joining the Fife Club. He took out Ben Bateman. He beat both Stacey Howard and Janine the Machine, and then he beat Ethan Irwin to earn his spot here today for the championship. And your winner, William the Beast, Bibiani! The Shire Wolves are a dream matchup. Clark Wolf, who was the Rookie of the Year in 2016, Rachel Cushing, Rookie of the Year in 2017, they go on a run that could lead to the belt that they so desperately crave here today. And your winners and new movie trivia schmodown team champions of the world by way of knockout, the Shire Wolves.
here in the Movie Trivia Schmodown, we really have a good matchup to kick off this entire format. Someone who's having a tremendous year in singles and in general this year, and that's the android Mark Andreco. Mark Andreco this year is 3-1. And, and your winner, Mark the Android Andreco! If I do have to face Clark, it's going to be a lot like this match. It's going to be two friends playing against each other in a, in a fun, as affectionate as a competition can be. And if I win or she wins, it's a win for the Fife Club. It's a, it's a win. Showdown, the first half of the semifinals fleet. Ethan Irwin heading to the finals to find out who he faces in this semifinal match of the Ultimate Showdown. Mark Andreco against Clark Wolf. I'm Christian Harlow. I thought you were going to say Mark Ellis, who's playing, and I was oh. going to say it's Clark Wolf versus Mark Andreco, and what a matchup it is. The winner greets Ethan Irwin, but Christian, I think they're not looking ahead at all because they know each other very, very well. They have prior knowledge of each other's strengths, weaknesses. They have an affiliation. Well, yes, they do. The Fife Club was formed last year at the Spectacular to where Mark Andreco was part of the Lion's Den. Emma Fife was not a manager, and the first person she chose to join her stable was Mark Andreco. And Draco. A few months later, the Shire Wolves formed and they joined the Fife Club. And what a crew they have become. They have become very close. They study together. They train each other whenever there are big matches. When Clark Wolf fought for the title against Sam Levine, they get, had a study session. When Mark and Draco fought for the title against Bibiani, they had a study session. They steal the buzzers with, from the studio sometimes? That's true. C Rachel Cushing, the same. They were all there for each other when the Shire Wolves won the title. So this is a very close stable. Emma Fife took a big win here la last week when Clark Wolf beat Ben Bateman, once again beating Tom Dagnino and uh, I think eliminating him from the from the talk of Manager of the Year because here's Clark Wolf, Mark Andrego, the Fife Club going head-to-head. -head. One of these two will get the Fife Club into the finals of the tournament. Right, well that's the good news is that we know that we're going to get an incredible final in this tournament right. with Ethan versus whoever they play, but you look at the strengths and weaknesses, I do wonder if the team affiliation is being in the same enclave, if you will, if they share the same strengths. So it's going to change right. the way you do a wheel strategy where it's hard to know what your opponent's weaknesses are because they may in fact be your weaknesses. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly right though. You say that because they are friends and I know they're going into this friendly but they also like to win. They're both competitive, and they both know what each other are not good at. So what's the strategy going to be like? Because that's the other thing with the Five Club. The Five Club's players have become some of the best strategists in the game. You watch that match with Rachel Cushing and Clark Wolf on how they won those titles. It's one of the best played games I've ever seen. Think their way. It's a chess game, they not do. checkers. And Mark Andreco, by his nature, is a very competitive person. Um, I've got to know Mark very well over this past year, and he is always trying to figure out new ways what he should do with the game. You watched in the team tournament of the way he, had, he played against um, the, the Paddington 2 and the way that he and Snyder worked together. These are two people who really know how to play the game. So this is going to be a very interesting match today, a, a good schmodown match. It's going to be a great schmodown match. And we had some words from our competitors. Check it out. So you might think that I'd be a little stressed about this upcoming match because I have two competitors who are playing one another and it could potentially be a blood feud, but that is not what is going on today. We have two competitors who are part of the Fife Club, Mark Andreco and the fabulous Clark Wolf, playing one another. And honestly, it's a very low stress match. I want both of them to win. If we could just have a tie and advance them together, that would be amazing. Unfortunately, that is not 
what's going to happen, but the Fight Club is going to be in the finals of this singles tournament either way. Well, here we are with Mark Andreco, honestly the founding member of the Fife Club. It is because of him that this faction even began to exist. And I, you know, I couldn't be more proud of him. He's been an incredible competitor and also a really great friend, which is ultimately what we're looking at in this match today. Going into that last match, I was not thinking I was going to win. So that took a lot of the pressure off. <laughs> um, and now I, I really, I'm not feeling that much pressure to be honest, no matter what someone from the Fife Club is going to represent, which I think is the goal and amazing. You know, I didn't think I was gonna beat Drew. Uh, so I'm still kind of- It's a kinda, theme, I'm nobody still, thought they were gonna win. <laughs> I'm still kind of shocked by that. But to uh, to get to play Clark, this is, this is actually gonna be more fun than anything else because if I win, I get to play Ethan again, which is terrifying. And uh, and if I lose, I get to play Dan Merle. So it's it's a it's that's a win-win too. The competitive part of me wants to win, but that's only like one half of one percent of this. I really am excited to play Clark and just have a really good time. Mark Andrico, hello, greetings from the ladies of the Fife Club. Uh, we love you. I love you. This is going to be a challenge either way, but I think it's going to be fun. Good luck. We knew at the end of last year that the Five Club could be something special. We know for sure now that it absolutely is. And today is just another example of why that's the case. And as both competitors have said, this is a match between friends. It'll be competitive as hell because they're both fighters. But at the end of the day, the Five Club is true to each other. I am so thrilled for both of them. It's my partner and my faction mate. Um, may the best trivia person on this day win and uh, go on to the belt. As long as it's not a blowout on either side, we both win. I mean, it, it wasn't it wasn't like a la 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 we love each other type thing. It was, but I mean, it wasn't it wasn't just like oh god, these are just two friends. These are two people who want to win, but they respect each other very much. Yeah. And Emma Fife said as much. It's a guarantee into the finals, and whoever wins this, win or lose, is guaranteed to get into the spectacular because if they make it into the next round. And this, let's say Ethan Irwin happens to win and make it into the spectacular, they're guaranteed into the number one contender match. So whoever wins today is guaranteed into the spectacular, but it's the bigger prize of getting to that title match is what they're looking at. That's right. Going to be fun to watch the intros here because, like you said, it's not Hatfield versus McCoy. It's McCoy versus McCoy because I'm so nervous about your hand flourishes, knocking yeah. over your water. Let's go to the tail of the tape. The tail of the tape here, Mark and Draco, whose strengths are musicals, horror films, and what's that last one? Uh, tinkering me. with the game. Tinkering with the game. Okay. All right. And then classy Clark Wolf who has horror movies for sure, Sandra Bullock movies, and not wanting Tarantino on the wheel. Oh, I thought you were going to go with a bar membership. She crushes it at that place. Yeah. All right. So with that, we are ready to go. And how about you? Uh, yeah, I, I've, I'm prepared. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmoda. So out right. proud here today. This is new. Introducing together. Uh, what? Led to the ring by their manager, Emma Fife, and their stablemate, Rachel the Crusher Rusty, Cushing, the with a record of, of six wins, three defeats. Mark the Android and Draco and half of the movie trivia schmodown team champions with a record of seven wins, five defeats, classy. Clark, and Whoa! Wow. They came out together. Everybody oh, out together. Yeah. Arm in arm. Oh, there, yeah. Just Coming out together. together. Yeah, it's true. All right. I wonder if Drake, oh, what, what yeah. a gentleman getting to see for Clark yeah. Wolf. Yeah, and Clark Wolf has been through this before, though, too. Last year, she went in, uh, she went head to head in a number one contender match uh -huh. with her then partner, Mark Yodi Riley. Yeah. So she's been here before. She has played against rivals. She has played against friends. She is a vet of the game and having an incredible year, by the way. She is a total of, I believe, it is seven and one this year so far. Pretty incredible stuff. Nonsense. 
Baby Carrots fought against Josh Bakuga to the Friends theme. Have I seen such a chummy intro? That was very sweet. Well, they are both playing great this year. Mark Andrejko also only has one loss in singles, and that's coming to the former champion, William Bibiani. He actually has a win over our finalist, Ethan Irwin. So both of these competitors playing tremendous this year. Mark, I'm ready for this match. How does round number one work? All right, round number one works like this. Each competitor is going to hear eight questions. These questions are asked to the field from eight different corners of the movie, Trivia Schmodown Galaxy. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. I will remind the competitors of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you need to buy yourself some time. Use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge that you can use at any time during the three rounds. Christian, let's end a friendship today. All right, with that, Clark Wolf, are you ready? Yes, sir. Mark Andreco. Absolutely. Then let's get ready to schmodown. <laughs> All right. Locked and loaded. Christian, when you're ready. Ready to go. Question number one in the realm of comedies. In 2011's The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, it follows a group of British retirees who travel to which country? All right. Um, favorite hotel you stay? <laughs> San Diego, <laughs> gas lamp. Five, four. Hard rock. Three, two, nah. good spot. one. Pens down, please. And Clark Wolf. India? Yes, it is. Mark and Drinkham. Yeah. Tie game. All right. Very yeah. different fonts used. Is that an indication of confidence? <laughs> we'll find out. Your next question comes from the world of action slash adventure. And the question is. What 2011 action film stars Channing Tatum, Antonio Banderas, and Gina Carano? Uh, I don't know why you made that face with uh, the Hard Rock Hotel. It's it's just it's smoky. Uh, Five. They could be a potential sponsor. One four. Day. Oh, I like. You got to think. I about like them things. a lot. Three. You stole a two, sign from there. I did one. I like the sushi place too. <laughs> Pens down and Andreco. Logan Lucky. That's incorrect, Clark. Lawless. No. Looking for Haywire. Come oh, on, guys. Of course. Oh, hey Haywire. Yeah. That was showing on my plane. <laughs> All right. Next question. Dramas. Haywire. Dramas. Who stars as Joe Buck, a Texas dishwasher, turned New York prostitute in 1969's Midnight Cowboy? Yeah, kind of following your career path there. Huh? I was never a cowboy. <laughs> ah, I see what you did there. What did the sign say you stole? Legends? Yeah. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one, and Clark Wolf. John Voight. Yes, it is. Mark Andreco. Tie game. John Voight. Okay. He used to own a Cadillac in Seinfeld. Your next question. I saw him at a P.F. Chang's once. It's, it's, it's a great it story. It should probably be edited out. Okay. Animated movies. These are movies that are drawn by hand or on a computer. Your question is, in Finding Dory, what actress playing herself provides multiple recorded messages broadcast throughout the Marine Life Institute. I'm glad there are no rookies here to scream out the answers today. Uh, it had to do it once. It's, it, it wasn't a direct <laughs> five scream out, but it, Four. it, it wasn't good. It Three, wasn't great. Two, one. Mark Andreco. Ellen DeGeneres? No. I don't have it. Yeah, okay, here you go. We're looking for Sigourney Weaver, Ellen oh, Ripley. Sigourney. I'll send you a poster of that movie That as was well. a good bit in that movie. Mm -hmm. All right, rom-coms is the next category here for question five. Freddie Prinze Jr., friend of the show. Friend of the show. And Rachel Lee Cook. Not a friend of the show yet. Never met her once in my life. Starred in which 1999 rom-com? Freddie Prinze Jr. and Rachel Lee Cook starred in what 1999 rom-com? She has braces and a ponytail. She's so unattractive. Five, oh, they're, I four, believe they're quoting the movie. I think so. I believe Three. they're having a bit of fun with Why this. am I counting down? Uh, Clark. She's all that? Yes. She certainly is. <laughs> she's all that. Okay. 3-3. Three, three. They both had she's all that. They could give a flip about Sigourney Weaver, but mm -hmm. they know she's all that. <laughs> all right. Your I'm next a fan question? of the Freddie Prince oeuvre. In the world of the 2000s, these are movies that came out in the decade of the 2000s. Your question is, who played field reporter Brian Fantana? In Anchorman, the legend of Ron Burgundy. I think I'm one of the that few people who likes the second one. Um, me too. I know you like me too. Five, yeah, fam. four. Big I fam. said one of the few. Three. Yeah. Two. I'm happy to be in that club. One. With you. Mark Andreco. Paul Rudd. Yep. Clark. Paul Rudd. Tie game. Uh, they know right. what they know. They know it. Is, both of them have not missed a question That's that they right. both know. That's true. <laughs> they right. also like Paul Rudd more than Sigourney Weaver. Well, here we go. Next question. Horror. Slash thriller. 
who stars as the pregnant and paranoid Rosemary Harris in 1968's Rosemary's Bebe. Okay, so you've been through, uh, you've been through two of these. Yeah. Have you ever considered yourself possessed? Uh, paranoid. Oh, five, say. four, have you ever been possessed? three. Should we talk about that instead. Two, one. Pens down. Pens down. And Clark, uh, should I even ask you this question? Mia Farrow. Yes. Uh, and Mia Farrow. Yeah. Okay. Five, five. All right. And the last question. That's right. I'm so glad that these questions give our competitors time uh. to chit chat and make small talk. <laughs> All right. We should have some tea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, is there a game I got going? You. I got <laughs> you. Okay. All right. Your last question comes from the world of fantasy science fiction. And the question is. Light Cycles is the name for the two-wheeled vehicles that are used in the survival racing matches in what film? Five, four, three, two, one. Mark Andreco. Tron. Yep. I do not. Uh, Speed Racer. Didn't mm. have it. Okay, so Mark Andreco takes a one-point wow. lead there. <laughs> and a friendship is on oh. the rocks. Yeah. And Mark Andreco goes up one point with Tron. And the only time it's been good for anything. Now we go to round number two. Both have their JTE rules. Both have their challenges. Mark, where do we go? And both have their adoration of one another. This is the wheel round. The wheel of justice, doom, and we'll seal the competitor's fate. Unless, of course, we go into round three, which we probably will. The wheel has 12 different wedges. Two of them are opponents and spinner's choice. The remaining 10 come from each come from a different corner of the movie trivia Schmodown galaxy. You will spin that wheel, and once you settle on a category, you get four questions. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. If you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. And before I'm done talking, I would like to remind both competitors that uh, there's a very special wheel slice out there today, and it belongs to none other than director extraordinaire Mr. Quentin Tarantino is the Patreon slice. Check out the Yay. movie Trivia Schmodown down Patreon today. If one of them spins it and selects Quentin Tarantino, we'll say the name of the patron. So if you are that patron, don't hold your breath. <laughs> All right. So with that, once again, uh, there is a one point lead here. Mark and Draco, you can go first or second. Would you have a preference? No. Then I will go first. All right, please spin for the Ooh. wheel, not the peg. Clark clearly wanted to go first, and Mark Andreco said no. <laughs> and there's the spin. I'm creating drama. There is the spin here. All right. See and the, the competitors clapping yeah. for each other as though this I'm, were an early round of Wheel of Fortune. Now, what do you think they would do if it lands on opponent's choice? Do you think they'd go for the jugular? Uh, no. I don't. Oh, well, and, and I like that. I, I, I like classiness wait, in a match. Well, wait, um, I just might have jinxed it. Oh, oh boy, Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Not the sweetheart darling of the Schmodown like my He's going to stick is. with it. Oh. I got it. All right. I got it. Going with Sandra Bullock. Yeah. Uh, Sandra Bullock. Sandra the Bullock. The fear of Sandra Tarantino Bullock. is strong. All right. Sandra Bullock is indeed the category. And here we go. Okay. Mark, question one. Yes. I'm ready. Not you. The one who's competing. Excuse me. The one who Clark Wolf hasn't beaten. I'm kidding. Why is Sandra Bullock's Annie taking the bus in speed? To get to work? That's incorrect. Uh, she lost her driver's license. That's correct for two points. Oh, boy. Okay. Next question. Who plays Bullock's former high school classmate and love interest, Justin, in Hope Floats? Harry Connick Jr.? Yep. And All right. What a voice on that guy. Okay. And in The Prince of Egypt, Sandra Bullock plays Miriam, Moses' biological sister, who voiced Moses. Uh... Five, four, three. Multiple choice. Is it A, Val Kilmer? B, Val Kilmer. That's correct for one point. All right. Here you go. One more question in round two for Mr. Andre. Last question. Who plays Ryan Reynolds' grandmother, Annie, in the proposal? Uh, Betty White. For two points. All right. So Mark Andreco Betty lost one White. steal, went to multiple choice. He's still up four points on Clark Wolf as Clark now spins. But Clark, I believe one of Clark's strength now is off the board. So that might have been good here strategy here. Clark by... Oh, she spits in Andreco's face as no. she walks over to the <laughs> wheel. Did not see that one coming. Our audio listeners are having a blast. <laughs> mm -hmm. All, right. All right. So, well, that, that was a good strategy by Andreco, though, I think, by keeping it. That's he, right. He takes right. It we off know the Clark Wolf, huge fan of the... Um, the miscongeniality yes. films. Uh-oh, look at this. It's coming around. It's coming place. around to opponent's choice. We and might... Christian 
It's going to stay an opponent's choice. It's opponent's so choice. Now, so here's the question. Mark Andreco must search his here's very the question. soul. What's he going to do? Is he going to? Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? What is he, is he going for the jugular? Mark Wolf. No. He's he's gonna go with musicals. Him. Is that what you're gonna do? He's going for musicals. Okay, going he's for musicals. He's picking his number one he's category, which strength. is very smart. Yeah. It's, it's very smart. Yep. Here we go. Four right. right. questions. Sorry. All right, Clark Wolf. You had the category musical selected for you. I did. I did. By Mark Andreco, and as a song and dance man myself, I figured I should be the one to read the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Your first query of four for two points. Who played Tracy Turnblad's mother, Edna Turnblad, in the 2007 version of Hairspray? John Travolta. It was, in fact, John Travolta. Yes, right. And Draco's strategy not paying off thus far. Your next question, Clark. The 1972 Sophia Loren musical Man of La Mancha starred which actor as Don Quixote? Uh, multiple choice. Is it A, Peter O'Toole, B, Richard Burton, C, Richard Harris, or D, Robert Goulet? Richard Burton. That is incorrect. Once again, Mr. Andreco, your options are A, Peter O'Toole, B, Richard Burton, C, Richard Harris, or D, Robert Goulet? Robert Goulet. That is also incorrect, though. He was great naked gun two and a half the smell of fear. Peter O'Toole. Peter O'Toole. Cool. Cool. Right. Right. Peter know. O'Toole. So Clark Wolf still trails by two. Yep. Two still questions like left. So and her penultimate one is the following. The team? world of musicals. What is the name of the song that Gene Wilder sings after entering the chocolate room in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Pure imagination. Wow. She got it right off the bat. Two Tight points. Game. She gobbled that question up like a goose this gloop eats chocolate. <laughs> One more question to break the tie going into round number three. And here it is, Clark. In the world of musicals, what is the name of the high school in 1978's Grease? Ooh, this is a great question. Rydell. Two points. It is Rydell. Clark Wolf and it turns it around question. and hit from opponent's choice and winds up taking the lead. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And Draco gets Clark's strength. Clark gets Andraco's strength. And we have ourselves a two-point lead by the classy one as we get into round three. These are two seniors in Rydell yep. as far as movie trivia showdown knowledge goes. Neither one of them are Eugene. We have a pink lady and a T-bird. And now we move on to the round that will decide your fate. Yes, I've you're seen the, Greece half a dozen right. times. <laughs> All right, kids. Here's the rules of round number three. Nine, Pretty simple. Y'all each give us three numbers that range from one to 20. Those numbers correspond to a different movie trivia category up here at the answer desk. The first question we ask you is worth two points. Next one we ask you three points. The last one, should we make it that far? Five points. There's no stealing in round number three. There's no penalty for missing a question. Park Wolf, you are in the lead by two over Mark Andreco. What would you like your numbers to be? 4, 12, 19. Okay, Four, 12, I thought she was 19. going all evens there. She ended up going with an odd with 19. Will that come back to bite her? All right, Mark Andreco. Andreco. 6, 3, and 2. 6, 3, and 2. Mark Andreco will get a chance here to avoid the TKO with his two-pointer. Mark, he chose category 6. He chose category 6. Yes, he did. Category 6. And Mark Andreco for two points. Your question is going to be in the world of comedy. <clears throat> Your question is, in The Hangover, as a prank, the trio steals a tiger from what famous athlete? Mike Tyson. Two it points. is Mike Tyson, and That's we are correct. now tied for the moment, although Clark Wolf still has her two-pointer right. dance. Clark Wolf, to bounce it back to Mr. Andreco, you have new releases. New releases. Okay. Clark, what musician was kidnapped by the villainous Poppy in Kingsman, The Golden Circle? Rihanna. Good for Elton John. Oh. Elton John. You can tell everybody. Yep. Elton John. That I'm not Rihanna. All right, so Clark. Oh, it actually goes back to Andreco. It does go back to Andreco. <laughs> yeah. Andreco, you selected number three? Uh, he chose number three, correct. Thank you. Yes, for confirming that. You're welcome. Your question for three points is going to be in the world of animated movies. Mm -hmm. Animated movies. And here it is. Who directed 2017's The Lego Batman movie? Five. For a three point. Four. 
Three, two. Repeat the question. That's your first. Who directed 2017's The Lego Batman Movie? Five, four, three. I don't got it. Two. You wanted to get Chris McKay. Chris McKay. Chris Surprise. McKay. Knowing his history with the, uh, the comics. All right, so here we go with our next question to Clark Wolf to try to take the lead here. Uh, and this is now category 12, Clark. Category 12. Action adventure. Action adventure. Okay. Here you go. In this 2013 action comedy sequel, retired co covert operatives are forced back into service to track down a portable nuclear device. That's it? That's it. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? Action adventure, yeah. Uh, first one. In this 2013 action comedy sequel, retired covert, covert operatives are forced back into service to track down a portable nuclear device. Reds 2? Red, red, oh. Oh. red. 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 Yeah, I can't take it. It's red 2. Red 2. You said reds. Reds 2. Wow. Can't reds take it. Uh, red 2. Red 2. All right, so shades of Sam Levine, uh, Clark Wolf here as we get now to our five-point. Five-pointer here from Mark Andraco, who chose category number two. All right, Mr. Andraco, you select category number two. And that is going to correspond to the world of crime. These are movies with a seedy underbelly. And your question is, what two actors start alongside Alan Arkin? in the 2012 crime comedy, Stand Up Guys. Five. Can you repeat the question? It's the second one. What two actors starred alongside Alan Arkin in the 2012 crime comedy, Stand Up Guys? Five, four, three, two. Michael Douglas and I don't know. Uh, that is incorrectly for Christopher Walken wow. and Al Pacino Hua. So we are back to, this is very similar to what happened with Wolf and Levine, and now we come down to a five-pointer. If Wolf hits it, she moves on to the finals to play Ethan Irwin. If she misses, we go to sudden death. Oh, no. So Clark chose category number 19. Category number 19 for Clark Wolf. Okay, so here we go. Clark Wolf in the realm of 2000s. Realm of 2000s. What 2000 comedy featured cameos from real life pro wrestlers Diamond Dallas Page, Bill Goldberg, Macho Man Randy Savage, and Booker T? Ready to rumble. And your winner! Advancing to the finals! Classy! Ready to rumble? What a big what a answer match. by Clark Wolf. You know, we have some fun with her selecting number 19, wow. and it ends up paying off for in a big way, not just for her, but also friend of the show, Booker T, getting a shout out. Yeah. Christian, what a performance by both competitors. It looks like from the scoreboard, a defensive struggle, but they both clearly know a lot about a lot of movie trivia, Schmodown category. Classy Clark Wolf has gone from never making it past the first round and making it to the finals. She is now in the finals against Ethan Irwin. She plays Irwin in a five round battle, and the winner will play John Rose for the title. Clark Wolf has ensured her sp herself a spot in the singles division in the spectacular one way or another. It's either in the number one contender match or in the title match. Now, Mark Andraco, on the other hand, he has a date with Destiny with Dangerous Dan Merle. Mm. They will now play, and the winner of that will be in the number one contender match. So, Dan Merle and Andraco will go right at it again, and they will play for the last spot into the spectacular. But your finals, my friend, Mr. Ethan Irwin going against the half of the team champions, Classy Clark Wolf. What a finals we have. It's going to be great, and I think this was actually a great match for Clark or if Andreco had won for them to play against each other because it serves as kind of a nice springboard warm-up to get to play somebody like Ethan Irwin, an opponent they may not be nearly as familiar with. So Clark Wolf going against Ethan, that's what we have to look forward to right now. You can look forward to Jen Sturge, who's got both an interview with the winner and the loser. Here you go, Jen. What's up, Movie Trivish Modon fans? Jen Sturger here. I'm with the Five Club and the Five Club. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, regardless of how that match ended, I can say that 
everyone standing in this circle right now, myself excluded, has had an amazing year. <laughs> You've had an amazing year too, Jen. I mean, Come it's on, been okay. Give some credit. But I don't have a belt on my shoulder. <laughs> sure. I have You're not been perfect. on your finger. Oh, right now, don't oh, talk. Oh, 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 awkward. I'm going to the gym after this. <laughs> Relax, everybody. Okay. I've seen the comment sections. <laughs> Chill the fuck out. <laughs> Anyways, so... Yeah, you guys have had an amazing year. And I think that, I mean, there's no question that one, that match proved what strong competitors you were, but also just what amazing teammates you are to one another. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Clark, you have to be feeling amazing. Mark, I think you were going to feel amazing regardless because you were happy for your teammate and that's just kind of the person you are, so. Yeah, I'm I'm annoyed now that Ready to Rumble has cost me (laughs) too. If I, if, I ever, if I ever see Scott Kahn, I'm going to punch him in the dick. <laughs> Will you watch a sports movie, for the love of God? That's a wrestling movie. That's not a sports movie. Ooh. Don't get me started. Ooh. Don't get me or Christian Ooh. started Some on that. controversy. But Clark, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. I know this, is, this has been a wild ride for you, especially with singles. You know, it's something that you've always just kind of fallen short of, just not even from lack of knowledge, just, I don't know, nerves or whatever. How does it feel to be advancing and facing Ethan Irwin. Still surprised. (laughs) Still very surprised. Um, I uh, was, you know, it's funny because when I finished playing Sam Levine for the belt, um, I was so proud of that match and it made me want to keep playing because I I felt like that was truly a toss up and it was for everything. It was for the gold. So I I told Christian, I want to play, get me in there. And now here we are several, several months later and uh, and, you know, I have a bad history with the tournament, and um, I'm truly shocked that I have won these last couple of matches because I, I the people who I have been playing are really good. Um, and I don't just say that because you're my teammate, Mark, and I don't just say that because you're standing right here. <laughs> uh, I, I truly, truly mean that. And um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm as surprised as anybody. You know, if I can pay you a compliment, Clark, oh, sure. I think you... You know, I mean this with the most sincere heart possible. I think I saw you grow as a player when you played Sam Levine. I think before then, you took your losses so much more personal. Mm -hmm. And I think that loss, I think you were just as happy if you would have won. And yeah, I, I think that since then, your confidence has seemed much more, you just seem so much more comfortable sitting up there, whether it's in teams or by yourself, but as a singles player, I really feel like I've watched you grow so much this past season. And regardless of how anything turns out, you should be absolutely proud of the person that you become. And I mean, anybody that watched her number one contender match with Sam Levine and anybody that watched Andrako's, you know, championship match rather Bibiani. with Bibiani, There's no doubt in anybody's mind that both of these players are amongst the absolute cream of the crop when it comes to players in the league, be it in singles or in teams in Clark's place. I I mean, I think that something that we see sort of paralleled in terms of uh, Drew McWeeny and Sam Levine's growth is once they got together as a team, I think both of them, even though they were both spectacular. They became the mega powers. Yes, exactly. (laughs) They, they They were both fantastic players to begin with, and then they evolved into being the best they could possibly be when they were with each other, and I think that that's what we're witnessing right now with Clark and with Rachel also, and and with Draco, who's now part of a faction that is more in line with who he is as a person. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? So <laughs> let's talk about spectacular. You know, with 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 what happened today. Uh, obviously, you're going to be playing with the Shire Wolves. You know, in a team match, <clears throat> but you're going to either be playing in a number one contender match or in the championship match. I mean. Playing two matches in one day, does that shake you up at all? Because I'm nervous. Uh, it's not my favorite idea. <laughs> Uh, it's it's you know we we talk about it all the time but these matches are intense and they're really exhausting emotionally draining that's exactly what I was about to say is like whether you win or lose uh, that is a huge thing like it's a it's a big weight um, no matter what and uh, so I'm not gonna lie to you I'm not feeling uh, thrilled about it however you know I'm going to be ready and I'm ready because I'm definitely ready to defend these belts with Rachel for sure and um and you know what uh I I feel comfortable in the five rounds and I feel comfortable uh and confident and um yeah so so I'll actually it's it's going to be hard but I'm I'm ready 
And then Draco, you know, you will be facing Dan Merle. Yeah. Ooh, great. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You know, if this was a year and a half ago, I might have the same reaction, but I feel like Dan has kind of shown that he has certain weaknesses now, and anything's possible in this game. Sure, great white sharks have re- weaknesses too. <laughs> But, but you, also, have, you have to get out of their mouths before you can worry yeah, about that. I would also like to point out Andraco's track record of beating the unbeatable people. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, Andraco beat Ethan Irwin when he thought he wasn't going to beat Ethan Irwin. He beat Drew McWeeny, the godfather of the freaking showdown. Like, there's a very, very good chance that Mark Andraco is going to win that match. And I think that what we're dealing with here in both Mark and and Clark is people who are very humble, who are who put their nose to the grindstone, who play the game really well, but don't go around like waving their successes in everybody's faces because they just know they're good and they're going to put in the work and they're going to succeed. And I will say this, Dan's an old friend, so getting to play him will be a lot like playing Drew and like playing yeah. Clark. I, I, you know, as long as I don't lose by 100 points, I'm going to have fun, you know. So I think it's, it's actually impossible to lose by 100 um, points. Um, you know. <laughs> 10 run rule, that one. First That's a sports every- reference. <laughs> Fine, whatever. <laughs> oh, well, best of luck to you guys. I am really looking forward to Spectacular now. And let's see what happens. Guys, back to you. Well, it's to nobody's surprise, they were all in the interview together, and they're all excited, and Mark and is is giving Clark praises and, and, and they all are giving her the words of encouragement to play Ethan. Now remember, Mark Andraco holds a victory over Ethan. That's right. And he might now be able to now lend some advice to Clark in order to go into that match. It's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen. Clark Wolf is a seasoned vet of this league. She has been in this league for now three seasons and she has been in title matches. She is reigning team champion. Ethan Irwin has never been in one of those matches. Will so he shrink in the spotlight? We don't know what's going to happen. He, is, he has been the Andre the Giant of this tournament so far. He, he strikes fear into people when you mention his name. But the question, but the thing is, he's never faced anyone like Clark Wolf. So he's never been in a five-round battle. What will happen? He will be battle-tested when he faces Clark Wolf in the finals. That's right, Mark Andreco. Very cla- Maybe we switch their nicknames. Maybe it's Classy Mark Andreco and Clark the Android Wolf. No. All right. Well, join the Movie Trivia Schmodown Patreon today. Select which tier is right for you. Check out the Schmodown Rundown, which Booker T's popped into from time to time. Yep. And the Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook page. I'm Mark Ellis. Well, guys, again, remember, the Schmodown Spectacular, let me give you a rundown. Here is how it is going to work. Lots of matches. You have the Commissioner Bowl. That's right. You've been looking at all the drama going down so far with coups and whatnot. Well, finally, we're going to figure out what's going on. I will be competing in the Commissioner Bowl, going up against Thad Williams, finally getting my hands on them and it looks like Emma Fife and Finstock will also be part of that the four of us who the hell knows wow. what's going to happen in this in the next year but that is what it's looking for the commissioner bowl and then it goes down the team title match classy Clark Wolf who you just saw and her partner Rachel Cushing the team champions defend the belts against who the bo- who's the boss Mark Riley Ben Bateman for the title then you have the number one contender match will it be Clark Wolf, will it be Ethan Irwin? Will it be Mark Andraco or will it be Dan Merle? Time will tell. You have the Inner Geekdom Championship. Mike Kalinowski thrusting himself into this match, saying he has to be in this match Corruption. and corrupting the entire thing. He is going to be in this match and he will be getting a chance to take the title away from the rookie superstar, the amazing Mara Kanopic, as she defends the belt. Mm. And finally, the singles championship is on the line. John Roca puts the title on the line against either Ethan Irwin or Clark Wolf. One of those two will be facing John Roca for the title. Will it be the Andre the Giant, Ethan Irwin, or someone that Roca has never faced, never in teams, never in singles? Clark Wolf. That's the card. Really? Thank you guys. Really? Never. Thank you guys. So make sure, like Mark said, join the Patreon today. Watch the rundown. Put your comments in. Who do you think will be in the finals? Will it be Wolf? Will it be Ethan? We'll see you next time. <laughs> Earl down. Wolf next. Come in. Hey! I'm so glad to see you. What's up, man? So happy to see you. Look, you, you, you. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Gosh, I'm splendid. Dude, beat Merle. That was amazing. Yeah. You took down a Titan. Now we got Clark Wolf next. She kind of scares me, man. 
She scares me just a little. She shouldn't scare you. You scare everybody else in the league. You see how I'm doing my hands like ping pong ball? Beats? I do. I do see that. Listen, you beat her, then it's on to spectacular. Matter of fact, I got something as motivation. Really? Yeah. All right. Did All right. See it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Close your eyes. Okay. Close your eyes. Don't open them yet. Don't open them yet. Okay, let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Open them. Ta-da! Is is that the real one? Ta-da! Where did you get that? Look, Roka left it on his desk. I just borrowed it for a second. Let's not worry about that. This is motivation. Don't you want to touch it? I I'm a little superstitious about well, touching it before it's actually mine. Okay, here's the thing. Just just feel the shininess. Feel the championship. Uh, it is it is, it is literally blinding. It is heavy too. This is yours. This is gonna be yours after we beat Merle. Well, you beat Merle after you beat Wolf, and then you go on a spectacular. And once you you're gonna beat Roka because he can't beat you. That is the Hulk Hogan. You're the Andre the Giant. You're just reversing what happened in matches. It's a wrestling thing. I, but this is I, yours. I don't know what that means. Well, we'll explain it later. Okay, good. But don't you wanna? Don't you? Wanna? I feel like you should probably put that back before they figure out it's missing. Okay, we probably should. That's not the point. But listen. Clark Wolf, last match in the tournament. Don't be scared of her. She's a great competitor. Great. But this is all you. All right. You know, I don't know yet if I like you or not, but keep up the good work. We do great work together. You know, you son of a bitch. Look, this is loser behavior personified. If you don't fix this, we're through forever. All right, I love you too, Grandma. Can I help you? Oh, you have. I told you a revolution was coming. The end. By the way, how's the lion's den? I think I went to jail with that guy. How's it going, guys? If you didn't know about the Patreon, you guys have a chance to support the Schmodown. Now, myself, Mark Ellis, we've taken over the production. Basically, you guys have 16 tiers to choose from. We're trying to give back to the fans. Go and check it out right there. If you want to support the Schmodown by becoming a patron today, go ahead and do it. Cannot thank you guys enough for all the support you've given us. And, yeah, there's some really crazy tiers in there. I'd love to get your opinions on it. Now, go enjoy the match. Go do it. It's a good match, for God's sakes.